80s, wasn't it? I'm not really sure why we went 80s there, as these guitars are all uh, inspired by, you know, like guitars from the 50s and, and the 60s, and, and I suppose maybe a smidgen from the 70s. But, but new. But, but uh, new. Well, new in the Fender catalogue yeah. for 2020. Oh, there's so much new stuff coming um, out all the time. Welcome to Anderson's TV, by the way. I'm we, Pete. I'm Lee, Pete. sometimes known as the captain, uh, and we have chosen... Uh, Three, four guitars from the Fender USA original series, which are, if you've got a, an itch for something from a bygone era, and maybe you're just not quite feeling the whole custom shop thing, then original series is where to go. So proper USA made, pretty similar Ooh. specs to what you'd have got back in the day. The Strat obviously is not a new... Uh, Good, look, there's a new model, it's a new shape yeah. and everything, so excited. Lots of, you know, the original series 60 Strat has been super, super popular ever since yeah. it came out. But Shell Pink, baby. Oh I mean, yeah, Rockwood Ford. Mm. Mm. So yeah, so that's what, that's really all that's new about that is uh, Shell Pink over the last year or two has been such a hot color yeah. for Fender. I think there's been a couple, um, there's a couple, there's three new colors, isn't there? And there's three new colors in the 50s as well. Oh, well, there's a Sunburst one, which is kind of going through Sunburst, but there's a couple of new colors. Mm -hmm. I know. Know. So There's like an Inca Silver in the 50s. Oh. We love that. Anyway, so that's yeah. that. The Jazzmaster also, again, is just a new color. So it's the tortoiseshell garb with the sort of the, is that Lake Placid blue? I say Lake Placid. Obviously, I mean ice blue, metallic. Um, yeah. So we can have a little dive into that, but. Uh, and here's what I'm really excited about. Yeah, because these are new uh, additions to the yeah. original series. And I remember having a thin line, but a Mexican version of it, like in back in, in uh, my, my proper days as a guitar player. And I absolutely loved that guitar. Um, and now here they are again. Yeah, and this is a um, little bit later. So this is from the 70s. This is a Tele Custom. This is a solid guitar, yeah. no F hole, but with the, um, what do they call this humbucker? The, um, the wide range. Wide Conniff. range. Yes, uh, now using, I mean, allegedly the, the correct alloy of wire from uh, back in the day. From back in the day. Yeah, yeah, they so tried to copy another, them as much as they could. Tim Shaw kind These of are Tim uh, Shaw in here. discovery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, they do a lot of stuff in all the time. I'm really appreciative of all the effort and, and research they put into it, you know. So let's do some tones. Uh, before, you know, for those of you eagle-eyed there that have spotted the Esquires as well. These are from the Squire Classic Vibe range. Oh, these are so good. These are also uh, new for 2020. These are limited edition colors. Yeah. Um, we'll cover those in a minute. They're a lot more affordable than the um, Very original series. More. So come on, Pete, take us through the thin line. Yes. The great colors. That's seafoam green. Yes. Great. Oh, look at that. How's that ringing? I'm gonna stick on the slur. Gonna go in the middle position. Everything on full, because 99% of you guitar players out there just put everything on full. On the back, pick up. Thank 
Well, I can't follow that, can I? Man, that we, was, we lost you there for about you did. a minute. I can't remember what the... Um, that's a day it says... Um, a J-H-X Kodiak. Polar bear. Kodiak. Um, that's good, isn't it? That, is that the tremolo? It's just a tremolo thing, yeah. Very cool. Just... Is it just me? Or yeah, I got does, lost. I got does, the, uh, does the semi-hollow nature of the thin line telly take a little bit of the shrillness off the bridge pickup and just make it a bit more usable as a... I mean, there's As that a kind, kind of, of, of a clean, open tone. Yeah, maybe it takes a little bit of that top end mm. away because you, there's a little bit more. It sounds more hollow. Mm. I know. Right. Because I, it, I, I sometimes it, wonder how much of that psychosomatic. I you don't see think it's it hollow, is. But I, I've always thought that with the thin line, it's just the bridge pickup takes some of that very shrill. Yeah, but you get. That's the, that's that the front. Wicked. That's the front pickup. But yeah. you can hear is that kind of. Semi- So, and on the back. Just gonna have a quick uh, YouTube vote here. I don't even know if we can do votes in the actual cards. Whatever. Yeah, we can. I think we can do a vote do on a vote the side. Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. So, coolest scratch play ever on a Telecaster. I think the Thin Line wins, don't you? Mm-hmm. I think the Thin Line nailed well, there's the, the guard. I think the, the Cabernita has got a really, it's just it's like a bit tiny little thing. Up. It's like a pair of hot pants, isn't it? It doesn't cover much up. Um, you know what? I've seen telecasters with no scratch blade on it recently. What, full Keith bo- Urban played. Backside hanging out. It's so you've got. There's just no scratch. He's he's got a blonde fifty something telly. Mm. He's playing when he, he's doing "Don't Let Me Down" with John Mayer. But Keith Keith Urban. If you haven't checked Keith Urban's, he's a player. He's playing. He's a he is a player. He's like a rock star. He's got the rock he's a, star wife and everything. He's a fantastic player. <laughs> <laughs> he's a phenomenal, fantastic. Fabulous, but he's got some licks. He's he, an he's... Oh, Antipodean person. Yeah, mate. Anyway, whatever. Right. Yeah, is I, that enough? Have I we, absolutely have you love enough? this. I mean, the the when this comes in <coughs> in the blonde in the natural finish. Yeah. Describe it to me, Pete. Was it C shape? What, what what are we going on? Neck, here? neck is just a C shape thing. I don't know. If I, maybe the heavy lacquer on it. It's all nitro, yeah, isn't it? I think the original series. Everything is like nitro now as well. Yeah. Um, which means that when you, it'll wear down really nicely and you get some dings and dongs in it. Did you see the dude in, in the store the other day that had the, did I show you that? Yeah, yeah, that, I saw him and I was like, oh, so it looks there, like an old 60s yeah, strap. But we had a guy, the young guy came into the, the store, I think he might have been an ACM student, but I, I can't remember exactly. And he had a super badass, cool looking 60s relic. Yeah, it was like a yeah, so sunburst. I, I, we were, ch- I sort of went, oh, that's a cool looking guitar, you know, what is that? I'm like, oh, it's not custom shop. I'm like, did you relic this yourself? Or you know what? And he went, no, no, no. He said, I bought this two years ago as a, literally would have been one of these in sunburst. Yeah. And he said, I've just played it and played it and played it and played it and played it. And it was just like, it looked like a Fender heavy relic. It looked, yeah. It was like, and I was like, fair play, man. I mean, I, 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 I don't tell you think what, I own you, any guitars. I know that, that if I play, if I if I do gigs with a leather jacket on, yeah. for instance, I'll be able to see immediately right. when it, it's been worn. You can. There's some yeah. stuff, some material, yeah. just gets the. Anyway, so what we're basically saying, if you if you go Fender Original Series because of the um, the lacquer that they use or the finishing they use, sorry, the nitro cellulose finishing, you know, again, expect to see that start to, to crack and wear a much faster than if you bought, um, you know, a guitar that was a standard polyurethane kind of thing. You know what they're nailing, sorry to... What are they nailing? They're nailing this collar. The tint. The tint, man. The tinted neck, yes, they are. Uh, the naughty tint. Anyway. Right, well, you've got, the, you've got the classic kind of more... That's what I was saying. I, I look at this guitar and I see the, the, the logo and the machine heads and I think 70s. So yeah, I'm but guessing it's like the si- thin late, line must late, be late, like a 69, 69 or something. No, 68, I think 69. Um, it's a great number. I love... Steve Frank Green with the tortoiseshell guard is a good combination. Anyway, um, let's hey, go we should do some relic. We should do some relic to these. Yeah, why not? Telecustom. Uh, oh, who do I think of with Tele Customs? Who plays a George plays a black? Did he play yeah, something like this? Yeah, I think like so. This? But they did a black one, didn't they? they did a black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure that. And then, of course, you can get the thin line version with the two wide range humbuckers as well. That's another '70s kind of uh, custom. That was a thin, thin line, line or something. Yeah, uh, there was, they did a thin line with two of those wide range. Anyway, 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 this must be one of the only Fender guitars where you actually get two volumes and two tones. So you actually get like a Les Paul kind of tone configuration here. <laughs> I'm not going there. 
I threw it in just for you. <laughs> I am a, uh, hello everybody, uh, I am a liquorholic. Yeah, my name is Lee, uh, I'm, a name is Lee. I'm a liquorholic. I'm a liquorholic. I can't help myself but play. Uh, it has been three days since I last uh, <laughs> played. played that lick. <laughs> There's a series there. Um, so, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, neck pickup. A very unfamiliar kind of telly sound there, really. I like it. It's not it's not familiar, but it's anyway, uh, bridge pickup should sound a bit more. It's a very indie rock machine, isn't it? It's a great sound. I mean, the, what I like about these old tellies, again, is that it's almost like the less pedals you put... Well, no, you did an amazing job with your pedals. But oh, they, I put lots of... Yeah, yeah. They ring like crazy, yeah. don't they? I mean, middle... That's so 70s. Uh, it, literally, it's just like, well, oh, custom. We've, we've run out of space. How are we going to get the word customer? Even, make it even the word Telecaster only just fits. It's, it's so um, 80s. Bullet truss rod cover. Yeah. Um, have you, three is, bolt neck design. Oh, so we're right, going okay. very 70s now. Is it heavy? Um, yeah, pretty heavy. It should be. Um, it should be. That's where you get all those fat tones. I mean, I don't really have any of those kind of big classic Pete licks. Or Yeah, man, let, let the guitar inspire yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, but I like that kind of, I like that sort of. I like that kind of just very Telecaster vibe. Anyway, so that is the Telecaster. Let's move on. There's also on. a new, just, just, to, just to throw it in just there, to, there's to, a new to, colors on the Telecasters as well. You Let's put have, links into yeah. the description. Original and series, maybe they'll appear on screen. There's a burgundy mist one, with, which looks amazing. So now the Jazzmaster again, lots of different variations of this in more contemporary ones, but the original stuff was a rhythm kind of setting here, where you've got a volume and a tone, but it's got some of the treble taken off of the the, 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 the tone, circuit. and nothing down here does anything. Yeah. Once you're up here, and then the lead circuit down here, where you basically you've got the the switch and these do, and you're just here, if, if we sort of go from your rhythm to your lead circuit. That upwards position has just had some of the treble rolled off. Yeah, right, even, even if I'm on the, on the front pickup. Is the I think it is the front because this doesn't do anything. Yeah, but it's still there's still so a circuit. That pick up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you mean. Something in the and circuit. And then you've got the you've got the the lock that I'm never really sure whether it even works on the trim system. I think you have to pull um, it up and stuff. Do uh, you? These have got the uh, these the old uh, fashioned see, original. On, yeah, my on when I had my Jazzmaster, I would um, you can either get a little roll bar that goes across here that slides onto this. Oh right. So it slides underneath there and it holds down the strings, which means that these can't accidentally fall out. We'll, we'll need to do a super close-up of what Pete's talking about. Yeah, so these, the bridge on a, on a, an original Jazzmaster is... Yeah, uh, it does that. Like a, so heavy, if you really, a heavy handed strummer will just move the strings over yeah, the bridge and, and it And it, you can literally... It, it, Sounds like a James Bond. <laughs> so what you can do is you can buy the Mustang, I think it's the yes. Mustang, where they've got little one groove. 
Yeah, where they much sit deeper in, groove. Much deeper groove. I like a deep groove. And it's it, literally, it's it's designed to be a retrofit. So you just take the strings off, that the, comes out. Comes straight out, another one in, in yeah. boom, Or you can away. get the little roll bar that I've yeah, put on mine. I don't think I've ever seen that one. So anyway, it just holds down the strings. Do, anyway. do tones. I was, going, I was going, he's switching the switch again. Anyway. Well, let's try again. Here you go. It's the jangliest guitar that Fender make, isn't it, the Jazz Master? It's very, very jang it's so Jazz jangly. Master jangly. Um, and I love the little puff of like air coming out of the Fender logo. I think that's such a time uh, it's a, of an era, isn't it, from the 60s. It's a little, like, little Fender fart coming yeah. out the back of the F there. And it's flying, um, flying away that way. So. It's fast. That's the Jazz Master. Again, you've seen us probably demo these before. It's really just the new colours that we're showing off. However... Yeah. Uh, let's finish with, uh, well, we should say, obviously, if you, American Original Series is all going to cost you somewhere between sort of 1500 and 1800 pounds, depending on uh, what model you go for and stuff. Uh, but these are right down the other end of the scale in terms of uh, value for money. Yeah. Last year, we had a, what colour did they do? Was the original one? Was it blonde? It was or, a blonde one. Uh, so there are three colours. It's like yellowish. Was it white? Might have been white, actually, the oh. one that came out last year. It was definitely blonde, was it? Yeah. Anyway, so this year, Fender have done... Uh, these are always done as, as special runs, so they're not, you know, in the catalogue forever and ever. They're just like, oh, we've made, like, a couple of hundred of, in this colour. Do you want any? Boom, that's it. Move on. So uh, if you fancy one of the green ones or one of the blue ones or one of the off-white ones, which yeah. I think... Um, they're, they are limited, so once they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. And uh, what, how much are they? Three three fifty. So it's classic vibe money. It's all. all I the mean, classic it, for vibes. that amount of money, yeah, it's insane. Because again, the the tint on the on the um, on the neck, they just get it all right. The feel, it's not too slim. It's not too fat. The frets are not sharp on them. They've got I, the good I never tuners. remember with, with the Esquire. The timeline of the Esquire, so I think some people think because it's a simple looking guitar that the Esquire came before the Telecaster, but I don't think it did. The Broadcaster I'm, I'm sure was first, it, wasn't it? Yeah, but I think the two pickup one was always first and the single pickup one was like a variant of that. Do you yeah. know what? I, I'm I, sure I, people, I, people are gonna, tell us. People are going to tell me now, aren't they, as to whether I've got that wrong. I, I'm sure they are, they I'm will. sure over the years I've read both, but it was still yeah, very much like an, an early 50s thing. But the idea being is the three-way switch, rather than switching between the two pickups, which a conventional one would do, it switches in like a capacitance circuit that rolls all the treble off of the guitar. And I believe this is, this is during an era before the electric bass was invented. And the idea was that you would have uh, a very sort of um, a dark bassy tone to provide the sort of the rhythm <laughs> So it keeps dropping the off song. there. It's fine, keep, keep I understand. Off. So look, here's <laughs> the back pickup where you, you're traditional. You know, very telecaster -y. And then at the front here, it's the same pickup, but... I can't 
can't remember what happens in the middle. What else can I tell you about this guitar? Solid. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a. I guess it's like an older it's body, poly, isn't it? Uh, yeah, poly all poly lacquers. Uh, it's not the big baseball neck that no. you would get if you went true to the original size. No. It's more like a, a conventional uh, c shape uh, modern feeling neck. It's not going to scare you. Uh, I was going to say something else and now I can't. Oh, I was going to say one of the coolest guitars that ever came out of the uh, Fender Custom Shop was the was Mike Purple, John English, who <laughs> used to be head of the Custom Shop and sadly he's passed away now. He did a thing called a Stealth Esquire and he put a oh, yeah. neck pickup underneath the scratch plate. So it's kind of like it, it did there. have a neck pickup, but you couldn't see it. So it was, that's the stealth bit. That was cool. Anyway, so give us some tones, Pete. This okay. Is all the master. <laughs> What is the lick? That's the middle position. It's kind That's of... And there's the back... I couldn't cope, Pete. I had to look up <laughs> on the internet what uh, the wiring uh, and the history of an Esquire was. So the first thing that I read is it didn't precede the Telecaster. Yeah. It came out almost simultaneously, I think. I think the first one was in 1950. Uh, but it was designed to appeal, you know, they players could hear the difference between a guitar with two pickups versus a guitar with one pickup. Yeah. And that's not... No, I mean, a lot of people do that. It's, a, it's this... It's a tiny bit of difference, but yeah, if you look at Phil X, Malcolm yeah, Young, Jared. Jared James Nichols, mm -hmm. yeah, they're all guys yeah. who just want a single pickup version of their guitar because they don't like the sound when the they might not use it in. at all, you know. And so that was the that was the original, and then the wiring is so uh, in the middle. The middle position is normal Telecaster yes. going through both volume and tone and yep. everything uh, on the bridge posi position on the bridge pickup. Sorry. This position now bypasses the tone control. Ah, yeah, 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 that's it. So you've got like a, one less component in the way. I suspect that's, that's why probably why the difference with the tone on 10 is only marginal. Uh, anyway, and then the neck pickup, sorry, the what would be the neck pickup position, uh, position is this idea of this uh, all the treble rolled off. So there's your, there's oh, your let's, let's try that. So, let's so try it that is really its quick. own thing. Let's try that really quick. So just that. With the tone control working. Yeah, that's your normal. Yep. On the on the position three, you would call it. Yeah. It's going through a, a, another capacitor. Yeah. So, All like the, the tone rolled yep. off. You can kind of find that space. Yeah. It's not everything rolled off. It's slightly, and then on the on the position one, it's just. Yeah. So you're missing out. Yeah, and this I, component here. I think the volume's still in, isn't it? So. And oh. When this was launched in the 1950s, do you know how much the retail price on it was in America? I don't know, like 40 quid. It was it was $139. What? And do you know how much the case was extra? It was $40 for the case. What? So a third of the price, virtually, of the guitar was. But the, uh, the case probably like takes the longer case. to make the case. Maybe, yeah, you're probably right. There's more so, bits I mean, and glue. I mean, when you think about that, from, from you know, over the last uh, 70 years, if you did it 70 years worth of inflation on $139, I bet you it would be substantially more than £350, which is what this currently costs. Although you still don't get the case with it, I'm afraid. No, you don't get a case Although you this. probably can buy a case for about $40 still, so... That yeah, there'll be that hasn't now, gone up yeah, at all in that, 70 years. <laughs> they've um, got robots to make them. But they sound great, man. Yeah. And they're, they're really, you know, just... I mean, it's, Fam it's more... Famous Esquire play. Jeff Beck. 
Yeah, Steve Cropper. There's probably loads, you know. Pete Hanori. Not, well, not really. But I think it's just about this on a Telecaster. Not yeah. from, I love the, the neck pickup on a Telecaster because it can be stratty if you play it the right way. But what are you looking at? What are yeah. you, is I I just thought I love. <laughs> I see Squire misspelt so often, as in what, what, an S? Squire. What, but, what? So of course the Esquire is spelt. Esquire. If you like. The correct way to spell Esquire, but the incorrect way to spell Squire. Oh, oh so I'm, yeah. I'm just saying it's just it's like I've never really thought about that before. But I Esquire. Just thought that, that's that's fun and confusing for for people. And do you know what the um do you know what the word is for Esquire. two words that uh, sound the same but are spelled differently? A homophone. Homophone. A homophone. And the only reason I know that is because my daughter brought home a worksheet from school about homophones. And I thought, I've never heard of that word before, homophone. What, what is a homophone? A homophone is where, like, say you've got, like, who's and who's. Two different sounds the same. Or not. Not as in, uh, that's not a normal Telecaster. Or, uh, please tie a knot in your shoelace. Oh, two, okay. different, two different words. Sound yeah. the same. Spelt differently. Different meanings. That's called a homophone. So, squire and squire. Oh, it's, it's, the, it's the word for those things. I see. Yes. So, it sounds the same, but it's... Like, so, that's the, that's the homophone. Is that what it is? I'm going to say that word. So, squire, squire, squire and squire is a good example of a homophone. Hey, see, see how informative and educational sometimes these videos are. Not just about guitars. I mean, these are life skills, everybody. Yeah. Next uh, on Analysis TV, we're going to be doing <laughs> math lessons. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we should be doing the three times table uh, and <laughs> three six. Uh, anyway, here's an E chord. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, look, yeah. slightly long video this one, uh, but there you go. Hope you enjoyed it, uh, and we shall see you uh, almost certainly tomorrow on Anderton's TV. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>